Okay, we are recording and live. You just need to start the webinar. Okay, so here we go, folks. All right, Mr. Deliker, uh, we are on. So if you want to wait just a second for people to pop into the room. All right, I see folks coming in. Why don't you uh, begin whenever you feel comfortable? Okay, Dr. Sosnovic, thanks for setting this meeting up and welcome everybody to the August 5th workshop meeting. We will be following the workshop format for this meeting. And uh, let's begin with opening exercises, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and Mrs. Partinio, will you please call the roll? John Cassiano. Here. Willard Deliker. Here. Joseph Batzinger. Todd Hernandez. Here. Todd Leiser. Here. Marcy Pazinski. Here. Alan Rex. Here. Rachel Scheffler. Here. James Warfel. Here. Mr. Deliker, you're muted. Tonight's uh, agenda is the workshop agenda. And uh, there are two items on the agenda that I will be asking for retroactive approval. So we will be taking action on items 2.02 .02 and uh, 4.01. And we'll explain why when we get to those items on the agenda. So with that, I would ask for approval of the agenda. So moved. so moved, Pazinski. Motion by Ms. Pazinski, second by Lizer. Mr. Lizer, any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. And we have an agenda. So welcome again. Uh, at this point in the agenda, we'll offer courtesy of the floor for anyone who would like to address the board. In doing so, uh, Dr. Sosnovic will uh, see you raise your hand and then he'll pipe you in and please start with stating your name and address. Uh, Dr. Sosnovic, are there any uh, people waiting in the queue? No, sir. Okay, there will be another opportunity for courtesy of floor at the end of the meeting tonight. So we'll move on to our curriculum and building issues First, uh, Mrs. Holman, would you run through those, please? The uh, or or uh, Leanne Stitz, Mrs. Stitzel, two point zero one, the Apex Learning Agreement. Sure. Yeah, well, I actually, we'll ask Mrs. Stitzel to do the Apex Learning Agreement. Yes, and actually, I think I'm going to take two point zero two as well. But um, as far as Apex, the agreement goes. Apex is an online curriculum provider with that also provides teacher support. So we would like to use Apex Learning as an option for our high school digital academy students um, in order to expand our current course offerings within our digital academy program. There's no annual fee and we would uh, use Apex on an as needed basis. And 2.02, .02, in regards to the eLearn 21 contract with CLIU 21. Um, eLearn 21 is basically a repository of online curriculum content that we are working with in agreement with um, the Capital Area Online Learning Association and also our local intermediate unit 
to assist us in providing teacher training, um, troubleshooting, setup, et cetera. Uh, the course content that is this online course content has been vetted and is vetted on a regular basis by educators across the Commonwealth. Um, it gives our teachers access to a wide range of course content at every level from K to 12. Um, and it will also allow us the option to give access to substitute teachers in order to have content available immediately so that online learning can continue in case the, um, our teachers are not able to be there and function like in, in their classrooms. Um, it allows our e teachers to edit content, to add content, and um, also embed their own lessons and activities into the learning platform that is provided by CLIU through this eLearn21. Um, it also will help us to streamline all of our online content in one place so that teachers, parents, and students can access it easily. Um, it allows us the flexibility to pivot from face-to-face, -face, online synchronous learning, and also um, if we need to a blended type of learning environment, teachers are able to use this content for any kind of learning modality. So it would allow us to then switch between the three if we need to. Um, so like I said, this is online curriculum content. The teachers will have access immediately to high quality lessons, projects, assessments, um, and will not need to necessarily create these on their own. So we really thought that this would be a very good option for us to provide to our teaching staff in order to um, have some high quality lessons for our students moving towards the online learning. Thank you, Leanne. Are there any questions from the board regarding these two items? The, um, the 2.02 eLearn21 that uh, Mrs. Stitzel described is necessary for in the event that we are going to go stream uh, synchronously with the uh, students in the classroom. And uh, I, th I think I'm getting this right. Maybe I need some help, Mrs. Holman, but this is to uh, set us up so that we can stream our classroom classes at the same time as we're conducting them in the uh, classroom. And uh, we need to get this set up in the event we have to go to that option, depending on what the governor's uh, recommendations or, or commands are when we get closer to the start of school. So this this item 2.02 .02, and then the, uh, the fiber upgrade in 4.01 is necessary so that we can uh, stream all of the teachers at the same time uh, live synchronous, synchronously with the uh, rest of the kids who are in attendance in the room. So. Mrs. Holman, maybe you want to clarify that maybe a little bit if I didn't nope, get it right. I, I think you said it right. Um, I will ask Dr. Sosnovic, um certainly to um, give information about the PTD connection that you mentioned in the latter. Um, but Mrs. Stitzel described the content very well. It is a content repository for our teachers and it will be utilized probably either way. And so for those of you who got my update on Monday, we did on Monday send out to our community that, and I'll, and I'll give this update in the health and safety plan, but we offered our community both options. Um, they can choose from either option. And so this won't just be used in the event that we go completely online. This will be a repository of content that our teachers will also be able to pull from um, when they have students sitting in front of them, as well as students selecting online and also to be used in the event that we end up completely remotely. Um, and, and um, it'll be used in all three of those occasions. We thought it was a good idea to be able to purchase that content for our teachers to be able to use that will help with the seamless transition um, for whatever the next school year has to throw at us. So with that introduction, uh, I would entertain a motion for 2.02 .02 to approve the uh, eLearn21 and, uh, and a second, and then we can uh, get into questions and comments, please. So moved, Pazinski. Motion by Mrs. Pazinski. 
Second Rex. Second by Mr. Rex. Now, are there any comments or questions from the board regarding eLearn 21? I do have a question on, uh, are we just leveraging the content uh, from inside of the platform or, and we have an unlimited license to do so, um, and or are we adding or augmenting any of that content? Um, if so, you know, do we have rights and licenses to use that content indefinitely in the future? I can certainly answer that, but I believe Leanne's probably more appropriate to answer that. Um, yeah, actually a little bit of both. So um, we have access to all of the content that is online through the eLearn 21 system. Um, we are not able to take that out of the system and let's say put it into Canvas or Google, Google Classroom or something along those lines. However, we can provide links within our Canvas and Google Classrooms to that content, whatever we want to use from that repository. Do the students need to set up their own individual accounts in there? Like how do they access that content? No, I believe that's something that we're going to work with the IU over the next um, week or so to make sure that all of our students have access to that through the teacher's accounts. So the teacher okay. would then be assigning the, the, uh, the items to the students and then the students would be able to access that. Mr. Delaker, it's, it, it's wonderful. Um, just a question, Leanne, about the ease of use and the need for teacher support and in-service prior to school mm -hmm. uh, opening. Is it extensively difficult to learn? Is there time to get people up to par for what they will need to do? Um, no, it does not seem to be very difficult to learn. And also um, there's a extensive amount of support also through our IU, which I think is a really big benefit of going with this program because we have the local connection and they are willing to provide even additional support on top of what would normally be provided um, through eLearn 21. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question about the, um, the content of the eLearn 21 relative to what's approved in our curriculum. Uh, will there be monitoring of the content to, to make sure that it is in line with what we have approved in our curriculum for these courses? Well, all of the content on eLearn 21 is already aligned to all of the state standards, the Pennsylvania state standards. So right there, we know that at least some of the material will easily be transferable over to our teachers and their classrooms because all of our content is also aligned, our curriculum is also aligned to the standards as well. So there might be things, like I said, that we would need to supplement through eLearn 21 because it's something unique to our curriculum. Um, but there will be some things that I'm sure most of our teachers will be able to take from eLearn 21 and utilize. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Cassiano. Are there any other school districts that are utilizing this program? Yes. Um, locally, um, East Penn, I believe, is, and Parkland is also entering into a contract with them this year. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other any other comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Partinio, would you please call the roll for a roll call vote since we're uh, streaming? Is this being voted on tonight or in two weeks? I'm sorry, I, I lost. We're, we're, we're voting on it tonight. Tonight? We're voting on it tonight, uh, okay. so please call the roll. John Cassiano? Aye. Willard Deliker? Aye. Uh, uh, Joseph Fatzinger? Here. Todd Hernandez? Yes. Todd Leiser? Aye. Marcy Pazinski? Yes. Alan Rex? Aye. Rachel Scheffler? Aye. And James Warfel? Yes. 
Thank you for the approval. I think this will be uh, a great enhancement for what we are trying to do uh, with uh, using technology in the event we have to go that route. All right, uh, next on the agenda is uh, 2.03, the agreement with Center for Humanistic Change. Mrs. Hallman, I'll ask you to please walk us through these items. Sure. The first one is the Center for Humanistic Change. This is an annual agreement. Center for Humanistic Change serves as our SAP provider, our student assistance program provider. And annually around this time, they send us a contract um, for them to be able to continue to work with our students. I did um, meet with the executive director earlier this week, and we think you know, it'll little, look a little bit different this year. At the end of last year, they started to do virtual sessions with our SAP teams and we anticipate that the beginning of this year will also entail some virtual sessions with our teams to be able to participate um, with the student assistance program. So the contract you see before you is certainly information about them as an organization. The second page is information about the program offerings and so our administrators can assign particular students to particular programs. Sometimes they offer programs to parents. Um, those of you who follow our Facebook notice that we put a, a two parent programs out earlier this week that they're offering via Zoom. And there's also some um, student and staff in services that they offer. Um, and you will see those attached. And the descriptions of the sessions for parents and students are also attached. And so you will see the last thing is the letter of agreement for the student assistance program. And obviously there's a lot of confidentiality given the circumstance of what they are involved with in terms of our teams for our secondary and our elementary schools. And we have been pretty fortunate to have one SAP person assigned to our school district for consistency purposes. and. Um, I invite any of our administrators, certainly, if they'd like to give any feedback about SAP, but they, um, they've been our provider for a number of years, Center for Humanistic Change. So I'll certainly take any questions, should you have them. Any questions from the board? We will be uh, taking action on this on August 19th meeting, and uh, let's move to the next item, the uh, Seesaw Agreement. We'll actually ask Mrs. Stitzel, she'd like to take this one or she'd like me to take it. No, I can take it, thank you. Um, Seesaw is a communication platform that um, has been used, the free version has been used by our K to five teachers. You Mostly I think our K to two teachers actually, um, this the past couple of years. Um, what we would like to do is pr purchase the professional version which would allow all of our K through five teachers to access this communication platform. Not only does it allow us to monitor student and parent engagement with the learning that is happening both, and we can utilize this both online and also synchronously within the classroom itself, um, but it will allow us to monitor student and parent engagement. It will also allow us to assign activities through that and to track progress through that. So we're looking to leverage the Seesaw uh, K-5 to allow us to have like a kind of a one-stop shop where we can have multiple different um, aspects of learning all funneled through this one uh, contract and, and one platform. Thank you. Any questions about Seesaw? Um, it looks like this is effective August 1st, so uh, we'll be taking action retroactively on the 19th. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Any further questions about Seesaw? Hearing none, uh, there are two items under uh, informational update. Uh, Mrs. Homer, would you please address those? Certainly. Um, the first one is a health and safety plan update. I mentioned it earlier on Monday. Um, last Friday, we finished our survey results for our parents was the end of our survey. Um, and we had a good portion of people that gave some differentiated choices. And so our principals did a great job between Friday and Monday crunching numbers and assigning class lists and looking at our students with special education needs and really um, coming together on Monday morning to come up with a plan for what we were able to offer to families on Monday. And so Monday evening, all of you should have received a copy of the message that I sent to our school community and we 
are very pleased. We weren't sure that we would be able to offer more than one um, district provided option. Um, but due to some of the things you see on the agenda tonight, as well as some that will come in the future in terms of our PTD connection, there's a lot of contingencies, but as long as all of those things we are able to get set up and our PTD connection comes through with, um, which Dr. Sosnovic will talk about um, 4.01, I believe it is. Um, we believe we will be able to not only offer our students a traditional in-person setting um, with socially distanced and all of the appropriate rules and protocols that are defined in the health and safety plan that you approved, but also be able to offer families a 100% with an online teacher with Northwestern teachers. And so, as you heard Mr. Deliker um, eloquently mentioned earlier tonight, that means that students will have the opportunity to be able to synchronistically connect to our classrooms and get content from our teachers. We also are also offering the Digital Academy, hence the reason for trying to um, get a different learning opportunity through Apex Learning, which you've already approved or um, moved along for board approval. And that is to offer some additional opportunities in Digital Academy. And of course, homeschooling your child is also always an option. And so we are pleased on Monday night to be able to offer our families both of those options. We did ask for some feedback from families to make a commitment for at least the first marking period and by, and by marking period thereon or semester at the high school to be able to start our class list and our planning. And so our principals um, have been planning and planning and planning more about the class list and the number of students assigned to classes at the middle school and high school and making sure our rooms were ready for our teachers as well as our, as well as our students. And so between now and um, I said July, August 10th, we are asking parents um, to give us a commitment for at least the first marking period of whether they would like to be traditional in person um, or they would like to be 100% online with a Northwestern teacher, or they would like to sign up for the Digital Academy. Um, from there, there's a lot of planning and, and signing up and getting student rosters and class schedules and things ready. We do anticipate we will be able to have those out to families um, somewhere around August 21st. Um, it will take some enrollment and set up of courses like we talked about earlier tonight, which is why we asked for that approval as quickly as we could. Um, so we're very pleased. We've gotten a lot of good positive feedback about giving choices. And so the two things that we've kind of, um, you know, used as part of our, our model is, is trying to make sure that we can do all of the health and safety recommendations that are in our plan, trying to create some normalcy for our children up to the, you know, our best ability, as well as giving families choices. And so those are two of the things that we've really um, been able to achieve. And I think um, our community is pleased with the options we've been able to provide. The second item um, is actually my mistake. Um, so last month when you approved the um, health and safety plan, the one attachment that PDE requires us to fill out is the emergency, emergency instructional time template. And it asks for the tentative last day of school. And I did so in haste. And so I put 2020 instead of 2021. And so for your knowledge, I am resubmitting. It is exactly the same as when you approved it with that one exception. I don't necessarily think it needs additional board approval, but just to bring to your attention um, in case there ever is a question about the, what I submitted versus what was on board approval, I did change the end, the last tentative date to be 2021, which is correct, not 2020. And so I just put that there. So you actually see the one that I am submitting because we discovered the error. And so, um, I will take any questions about the health and safety plan should you have them. There's nothing required from your for your action. Just wanted to give you an update. You all should have received the update as well as the FAQs um, that we sent out to all of our families on Monday. Thank you. Any questions from Mrs. Holman? Uh, Counselor, are we okay with that change without having to reapprove it? Uh, yeah, there's there's no problem with that whatsoever. I, I'd recommend though that you just make a note in the minutes that uh, the change was made. You don't need any action. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments for Mrs. Holman before we move to uh, policies? Okay, Dr. Sosnovic, will you please uh, walk take us through the uh, first and second readings, please? Yes, sir. There are two items for first reading, 816 use of live stream video on school district property. I will take that one and Mrs. Matika will speak to the second one, which is 103 discrimination slash Title IX sexual harassment affecting students. The first one is a policy being recommended in preparation for us moving to a more synchronous environment, whereby we, our teachers and staff will be utilizing tools such as Zoom 
like we are on now in their classrooms for educational purposes and other district events. This was actually recommended uh, out of the Carbon Lehigh Technology Council that we participate in and a number of districts are adopting this policy. We sent this off to our solicitor for review. And so we are asking for your approval uh, for it to go to first reading next week, please. Okay. And I will take policy 103. Policy 103 is a current district policy. However, there are new Title IX regulations. These are federal regulations issued by the Department of Education, which are effective August 14th, 2020. Uh, the new regulations are quite lengthy. I understand there are over 2,000 typed pages, uh, which will also result in updating and changing about six or seven more of our current district policies and maybe issuing one or two uh, new additional policies. Uh, you can see the policy changes are highlighted in green. I just posted this draft today. It will be going through a few more edits, I expect, as well as legal review, uh, but I I did want to get it posted this evening uh, for your knowledge. Any questions on the first readings before we move into uh, the next item? Okay, uh, Dr. Sosnovic, are there any, uh, has there been any input to the uh, second reading of those two policies? No, sir, we have not received any additional input. Okay. Any questions this evening from the board regarding regarding the uh, second reading policies? Employment of substitutes and federal fiscal compliance. Okay, moving on, we'll uh, move into operations and the first item 4.01 PTD fiber upgrade. Uh, and again, Dr. Sosnovic, will you please take us through the, the reason we're doing this? Yeah, so the reason why we are doing this is uh, for all the reasons that we spoke about earlier with regard to us moving to a more synchronous environment. For, uh, in order for us to offer the synchronous environment to allow families to stream in the classroom, we needed to update our fiber connection from a one gig link to a 10 gig link. There's a number of parties involved to make this happen. Uh, however, uh, if we could get this uh, pulled off, it would position the district well in our ability to remove any type of bottlenecks that may prevent us moving forward into the future with regard to streaming uh, live synchronous Zoom sessions or what have you within our classrooms and or for meetings or whatever else we might want to use it for. This is one piece of several that will need to be done in order for this to us to take advantage of the synchronous online uh, classes for the fall. The other one is we are working through uh, removing another bottleneck, which is our current content filter. And we are currently uh, working through the, our vendor right now to move into a cloud solution on that. Uh, you don't see that before you because it's going to be at no cost to us. It's already part of our current contract. So there's a number of things we're doing right now in order to better position us. Uh, this one is an imperative one because this is literally the transport that will allow for all of that to happen. And so we're asking for your consideration and approval uh, retroactively on this today so we can continue to move forward and um, position ourselves by August 31st to offer that online uh, instruction. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sosnovic. Um, this is a retroactive approval. We did have to begin the uh, upgrade so that it, we can meet the timing before uh, school starts to get the uh, infrastructure installed. And uh, that's why this is a uh, on the agenda as a uh, retroactive approval because of the uh, the timing. And um, since this is one that we're taking action on to this evening, I would entertain a motion and a second before we get into questions. So moved, Pazinski. 
Motion by Mrs. Mrs. Pazinski, se second by Mr. Cassiano. Now, any uh, comments or questions about the uh, fiber upgrade through PTD, Penn Teledata? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Partinio, will you please call the roll for a roll call vote? Sure. John Cassiano? Aye. Willard Deliker? Yes. Todd Hernandez? Yes. Todd Leiser? Yes. Marcy Pazinski? Yes. Alan Rex? Aye. Rachel Scheffler? Aye. James Warfel? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, this, uh, this action does upgrade our infrastructure to be able to do synchronous instruction and all of the other uh, items that you approved for uh, improving our software and enhancing the delivery has really given our parents uh, some uh, great choices for these robust offerings for curriculum delivery that uh, we are providing for them during this COVID uh, period we're in and uh, beyond into the future. So uh, in a few short months, our staff has uh, really done a yeoman's task in pulling together all the, the software and the hardware that's required to uh, make these offerings available to our families. And I uh, thank you for that. Um, so it's approved and uh, we're up and running. Next item under operations is the uh, facility rental recommendation. I could certainly take this one. Um, this is actually in your health and safety plan. We just felt it was important for you to um, consider this as a separate recommendation prior to our health and safety plan being approved. You um, gave us the permission and authorization to recommend extension of cancellation of all groups three and four groups, which is identified on your board agenda. That is also included in the health and safety plan. At this time, there is not a recommendation for ending that. And so we are asking to recommend extending it continued as, a, as under policy 707 for all groups three and four. It is approved in the health and safety plan written exactly as it is on your board agenda. Okay, so we're gonna leave the policy intact and uh, this is a temporary change until we get uh, through this COVID crisis that we have. That is correct. Any comments or questions? We'll take action on this in two weeks. That's correct. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, let's uh, move on to uh, Randy Wine Transportation. Ms. Strokes? Yep, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Holman. So this is Brandy Wine uh, attachment. We'll, we'll get attached prior to the board meeting. This is basically for our settlement and agreement of payment throughout the COVID uh, 19 pandemic and and we agreed that we would pay them with a discounted fee um, for the length of that time and that way it, it protected our reimbursement from the state that was a requirement from the state um, additionally we will have our updated um, cost addendum for the for the upcoming school year from brandywine prior to board meeting it's right now being disputed between legal and brandywine to get it finally settled so as soon as uh, soon as we get it back with all the Attorney agreements from Brandywine will get it posted here. <clears throat> Just want to give it a tickler for the actual meeting because it will be up for approval. Okay, so we'll see the uh, final output on uh, August 19th and we'll take action on it. Yes, sir. And this is all being done in accordance with the state requirements for these contracts that we have. That is correct. <clears throat> Any questions before we move on to the roof? Okay, Mr. Oaks, uh, weatherproofing technologies. This is uh, something that we do every year. Um, it, it is basically a maintenance program for all of our district roofs, and, and we continue to work with weatherproofing technologies, which is that division of Tremco. Um, we contract with them under the Keystone Purchasing Network, which we are a partner in, and we utilize their services for our roofing needs, and this, this takes care of it for one year. 
Um, and that'll come up for, for approval at the next meeting for the 16,000 some dollars there. Any questions? Any questions from board members? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Oaks, uh, two more items. Okay, yep. Uh, next, we have the McClure HVAC maintenance agreement. Um, this is, again, McClure has been our partner in our energy services for, for quite a few years now at the district um, with our HVAC and with our building envelope, uh, some lighting upgrades. We continue to use their services for these chillers, and the chillers are listed on that document for all the schools. Um, it's a basic maintenance agreement that, that we cannot do in-house, um, and we do need to contract out with them. It's utilizing CoStar's pricing and our partnership that we've had the last several years um, to get very competitive. So we're looking for approval to, to continue that relationship. Any questions? Okay, there are a couple items we have under informational updates. Uh, you gonna show this on the screen? The I think Dr. Sosnovic will show it. It's, it's the two updates for the track, which is finished. Uh, we have small little paving patch to fill in yet. That's gonna happen hopefully next week, the paver can get out, but otherwise the track is, is ready. Can you folks see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think you just have to hit that play button there, Dr. Sisnovic. I it is playing for me. Oh, it is. Okay. Are you not seeing it? It's fro it, it it's up, but it's frozen. It's not uh, moving. Let me give it one more shot. Give me a second. This was provided to us by the striping company um, who worked together with our, our, our CM Butts to, to give it to us. There it goes, Troy. You, can you see it moving now? Yeah, it's, it's moving. The other one. Can you see this one moving? Yeah. Oh. Is this Zimmy flying the drone? It is, yeah. <laughs> as you as you can see there with that with that short video, it just it really turned out to be a, a really beautiful site. It's it's something the district should be proud of. It was a lot of hard work and a, and a lot of effort to get to that point, but it's it's really something for the district to certainly be proud of. I know the student athletes. I'm sure maybe uh, Jay wants to add in there, but I'm I'm sure they can't wait to get on it finally. <clears throat> Yeah, it'd be better if there was a bunch of athletes on there. You're not kidding. <laughs> have to do another one with a bunch of athletes on it. We just wanted to bring you the video when Butts um, gave the video to Art. I said that would be really nice for the board to see. You know, we kind of got sidetracked with all the right things with academics and continuity of ed and all the wrong things in COVID and wanted to kind of wrap back around to show you kind of a good picture of what it really does look like. And it is something really to be proud of. And so we wanted to show you the, the video that um, Butts produced for us and provided to Art, which I think gives a good uh, a picture. I know Jason shared it down with Lehigh Valley Health Network as well. But thank you for your support on that. It, it turned out really, really nice. And I'm sure our student athletes can't wait to get on it. Yep. It's a beautiful facility. I hope we can get to use it. Okay, any comments or questions? I think we... Uh, 
I jumped over 4.04, the roof, and uh, 4.05 McClure agreement, did we, that we're going to approve or take action on in two weeks? Yeah, Art explained both of them. If you certainly have any questions, we don't need action on either one of those. Am I correct, Art, tonight? They can go That's in the 19th? Just, just to move forward till the board meeting, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move to uh, district finances. Welcome back, Leslie. Thank you. Um, 501 is Plan Con K. This is a routine item um, that's re a required submittal to PDE um, based off of the refinancing we did a few months ago. Um, so we need this board approved and then we have to submit it to the state. And we'll be taking action in two weeks, correct? Correct. Okay. 5.02 is the Northern Valley EMS agreement, also a routine item, um, approval of ambulance agreement for services for um, football games um, for the 2021 school year. Okay. And then the next two items, 503 and 504, also routine associated with um, services provided by um, 503 is Behavioral Health Associates. And we currently have students placed there and as an as needed basis have an agreement for fee for service. The 504 is the Whitehall Copley agreement, which you have seen for a few years now, also for routine um, and just needing board approval for the 2021 school year. And both of those would um, taking approval on the 19th. Okay. The 505 are the reports because we did not have a workshop or board meeting in July. Um, you will see a port reports are attached for the month of May and the month of June. Um, if you look at those recap reports, um, I'll say pretty routine. We have seen slowed collections in delinquent real estate taxes, obviously in interest income. Um, we have maintained our um, payment schedule and cycle from the state and as well as for federal revenues. Um, on the expenditure side, although we have had some reductions or in anticipating some reductions um, as we move through June 30th, um, there were many recurring costs that um, we were still, even though we were shut down, required to pay. Um, so you'll see the month of May, month of June, just as a reminder, these are cash basis reports. So these, um, the monthly report for June does not include any of the audit entries, which we're working on right now to close out this uh, fiscal year. And so if you look at, um, one other thing to highlight at this point, and again, I think we're on a timing issue right now, earned income taxes through June is still trending higher um, than it was in the prior fiscal year, but things are a quarter in arrears. So we will start to see the impact of COVID um, and unemployment as we move into um, the end of summer payments, as well as coming into the fall. Um, we get reports and updates from Berkheimer in terms of some uh, projections and what they believe they're seeing as payments are coming in. Um, so we'll continue to monitor that, but we haven't quite yet seen the impact of what that will look like for us for the rest of the year. What's the year over year um, property tax? Is that one of these reports? Um, so basically the only thing you'll see, so there's no current real estate collection through the month of May and June because we close that out effective December 31st. So what you see then basically January through June is really that delinquent real estate taxes. We are seeing lower delinquent taxes coming in on a monthly basis um, compared to what we've seen prior years. So I do believe for 1920, we will be under budget in collections for delinquent. Um, it's just a matter of time to see how we're going to trend moving into the current year. Um, you know, in terms of 2021 tax collection um, for the month of July, um, you know, we're really still early in the tax collection. However, we have seen strong collections consistent with what we've seen in the in prior years. So certainly we'll have a better idea as we get to the end of August, because that's obviously the month that most people pay, which historically has been the end of our discount period. So um, we'll continue to monitor that. But as of right now, we don't really have a lot of solid information other than, you know, the couple hundred thousand that we see coming in is consistent with prior years. You said historically the end of our, um, are we extending the discount period? Yes. Yep. So if you recall, the board took action to extend the discount period through September 30th. 
um, as well as eliminate the penalty period. So basically a taxpayer has July 1st through September 30th to pay at discount and then October 1st through December 31st to pay at flat. And then anything that's not paid after, as of December 31st, gets turned over to Portnoff, the same as it would in any other subsequent year. So that's going to significantly affect our August collections. Um, I, I'm not really sure, Todd. I think um, I, I, my personal opinion is I anticipate the mortgage companies are going to continue to pay on the mm -hmm. same cycle. Um, not, it's not something that changed statewide. So my guess is they're not going to change just for us. Um, we have a substantial amount of mortgage pay companies that pay um, proper for at least homeowners um, in the month of August. We've seen some uh, commercial properties that have historically paid early in mid-July continuing to pay on that cycle. So I don't think we've seen an impact yet. But again, we're still, you know, we're only at the beginning of August. Um, from a cash flow perspective, um, we have some CDs coming due in September. So if we do see a huge um, timing issue of people not paying in August as we move into September, we will be okay in terms of cash flow with those CDs. Um, and at least as of rates today, um, I don't anticipate being able to put those funds back into CDs. We'll probably get a higher rate in money market. Um, so we have, we'll have some anticipated cash flow flexibility through the fall. So with that extension of our discount period, and the delaying the delinquents, it's going to be a little bit difficult comparing this year to last year, as uh, people might wait a little longer. Mm -hmm. who don't pay it through the mortgage company to uh, pay their property taxes. Correct. And I think we'll see that trend as we close out um, if, on as we get into the fall with our monthly recap report. I show you the collection percentage by month and by, you know, discount flat and penalty. I think once we close out August and September, we'll have a better idea of the impact of that extension. Um, I, I do. I'm thinking it's going to be minimal, but obviously we'll we'll see. OK, any other comments or questions about the reports? then we will take action to receive them in two weeks. And we do not have any informational updates under finance. So uh, thank you, Leslie. Uh, let's move into old business. There is no old or new business on the agenda. Any board members have old business to discuss this evening? How about new business from the board? Hearing none, let's uh, move to uh, Curtis to the floor. Uh, Dr. Sosnovic, if there's anyone uh, waiting to raise their hand to address the board at this time, uh, would you please take hold of that? There are no attendees, Mr. Delacroix. Nobody waiting? No, sir. Okay, uh, there is no executive session this evening. So uh, with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, Rex. Uh, so one one second, Mr. Delker. Mr. Delker, can we just give two updates? One that I have and one that Jason has directly, Briar. I forgot there was not administrative sharing. So can we just give two quick verbal updates? One that I have and one that Jason has. I forgot sure. about not administrative sharing. Um, one I will give is, um, and thank you for indulging us just a few more minutes. Um, we also, we, you approved this evening a number of contracts um, to be able to you know, start this school year, but I would be remiss if I didn't say it's still going to be a lot of work. And, and you know, I, I'm sure some of our teachers will watch or have watched and recognize that you know, them, their effort that they will put in in planning and will put in throughout the school year is not, um, not no short feat either. And so, so them managing a classroom of students that's at home and then managing a, a classroom of students that's in front of them um, and the planning for both of those places, um, I'm sure is giving some of them anxiety about now. And so I know that they have put in some time with our administrators planning and roundtable discussions and thought processes. And so although we um, aligned all of the stars tonight for that to happen, they're the folks that are actually going to make it happen. And so I just want to shout out to them. Um, tonight and, and make sure that they're recognized. And I believe Jason has one update as well as I, I don't know if any of our others do, but I know Jason does. Uh, 
Thank you, Mrs. Holman, and thank you, Mr. Delker. Uh, just a few updates from the Athletic and uh, Student Activities Department, as there's been a lot of buzz uh, on Twitter and social media lately um, and in the news. Uh, so as I'm sure many of you have seen, uh, PIAA has released uh, their guideline for return to competition. Uh, they released that on July 29th. Uh, it was a culmination of several months of uh, committee meetings in each sport at the state level. Uh, to develop those safety guidelines. Uh, they secured approval from the PIAA Sports Medicine Board, uh, which includes doctors from a variety of, of special, special, specialties uh, and sports medicine uh, medical professionals. Ultimately, they secured the approval from the PIAA Board of Directors. Uh, and in line with that, we felt uh, necessary at the local level, uh, they equally agreed uh, to develop consistency uh, in our practices and our procedures amongst our member schools. Uh, approved plan was then forwarded to the governor's office, the secretary of health and the Pennsylvania Department of Education. And we have yet to receive any comment on that. Uh, at a news conference on uh, this past Monday, August 3rd, Governor Wolf and Dr. Levine uh, commented that they will be releasing more guidance on the return to sport. Uh, and it would include updates on spectator attendance. Uh, they said that was gonna come out today. Uh, today has come and almost gone and we haven't seen anything. So we're hoping that PDE uh, via Dr. Levine's office releases something in the very near future. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to update our procedures and processes uh, as that becomes available. Uh, the Colonial League Executive Board now met uh, on Monday, August 3rd, to discuss the PIAA plan. Uh, the full Colonial League membership met this morning uh, to determine our course of action as a league. A uh, motion was made to start the fall season uh, contests as originally scheduled, and we are awaiting the results of the electronic bat uh, ballot that was sent out on the motion. Uh, we should have that by tomorrow morning. Uh, after Northwestern Lehigh consulted with LVHN and with the support of Mrs. Holman, um, Northwestern Lehigh did vote in favor of this motion to start on time. Uh, we'll continue to update our safety procedures as the guidance continues to change. It changes rapidly, as you all know. Uh, and we will continue to uh, communicate that to our student athletes, coaches, and families. Uh, for the, for the, your timelines here, Monday, August 10th, that's Monday, this coming Monday, football will begin their regular practices with their heat uh, acclimatization period. All remaining fall sports programs are slated for August 17th. Uh, at this time, golf will be our first contest. That's scheduled for August 20th. Uh, football's first game is August 28th, and all remaining fall sports will have their first contest September 1st, 4th or earlier the following, early the following week. Uh, marching band will be our first extracurricular activity getting underway and their official band camp starts on August 17th. Uh, right now we're awaiting further guidance from the governor whether <laughs> marching bands are permitted or are not permitted at games. Right now they are not permitted. Uh, and if that remains, we're looking at uh, to perform our show uh, in our stadium and live stream that on a day and night when the stadium is available. Uh, lastly, in regards to us waiting on the governor for further guidance on spectators, uh, if the restriction stands, we are currently looking into live stream our, our home events. Uh, and if it's lifted, the Colonial League and, and all of our schools that are that we are competing against are going to make that, uh, if they do lift that, we're going to make it possible for hopefully at least the home, home parents to get there uh, if they force us to stay under the 250 uh, number. Uh, so more to come on that. And uh, Again, thank you for the opportunity to share the updates and uh, know that we remain vigilant uh, in providing our students with as many opportunities as possible given the circumstances and also in the safest way possible. So thank you, Mr. Delaker. Thank you, Jason, for that update. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaker, I, I prepped Jason to say that and I totally forgot that there was not administrative sharing. So I don't know that any of our other administrators have anything to say, but we got in the habit of administrative sharing at the end of every meeting. So that's my fault. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Any other administrators? And then we'll ask board members if they have any other questions or comments this evening. Any board members? Just a thanks to Zimmy personally for uh, bailing out my family and neighbors uh, in my community uh, yesterday. Good words coming around about you. Did did, uh, did Ralph tell you the truck I was driving? He did. Was he, was he impressed? He was <laughs> impressed. Yeah. Thank you. Jason, I have a question about streaming the uh, 
the games in the stadium. Would will there be any commentary going on with that streaming? So, Mr. Delica, right, right now I'm, I'm working with a couple of companies right now trying to secure some price quotes uh, to see if we have the ability to do that. Um, and I was the if you heard of the Penn Sports Radio, they do the internet um, internet uh, play by play. They're trying to work with me. Uh, I'll just give you an example. We we use a, a company called Shafe on Friday nights. They film uh, they film the the game. They believe that they can tie their commentary into the the video. Um, so uh, yes, the answer is yes. We are looking at those options, and um, uh, even as a league, uh, we're looking at various options and and the ability. Obviously, the media is going to be our partners if the governor doesn't restrict uh, doesn't lift that restriction. So yes, we're looking at all that stuff. Thank you. And uh, one more item for Mrs. Holman. Uh, you sent out a uh, request for two meeting dates for a uh, a budget uh, seminar. Have you received everybody's input for that? Oh, I'm going to ask Mrs. Partenia if she knows the answer to that. If she does not, I hate to well, stick her on the spot and I can get back to you. I don't well, know if Janine knows. Uh, we did not get everyone's response, okay. but we did get many responses. Okay. I was... Okay, I just want to mention it. So if somebody has not uh, com completed that, please uh, please let us know your availability so we can set that up. Yep, we sent out a doodle. If you have not responded, please do. So if you did not, I will shoot you a reminder tomorrow morning when Jeannie and I touch base, okay? Okay. So now um, I think we've covered everything and uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Pazinski. Motion by Mrs. Pazinski. Second, Second Hernandez. Second by Mrs. Scheffler. Sorry, I didn't see you there, Todd. Uh, thank you for coming tonight and uh, enjoy the rest of the summer. We have a lot of work to do coming ahead of us here for uh, budgeting and uh, getting school started. Uh, is there gonna be a uh, breakfast, Mrs. Holman, for the staff? Yeah. There is not. Yeah, um, I didn't think um, we would. Okay. Yeah, um, we're not even going to be able to probably have our back to school in the auditorium. It will likely be an electronic message from me. Okay. Um, so no, the back to school couple days looks a tad bit different, but we'll give you an update about what that looks like on August 19th when we meet. Um, but it's likely going to be virtual or um, a video message from me. Okay. Well, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. So meeting is adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night.